So, in five, four, three, two, one. Action. Well, after coming off a huge win in the Calgary bubble and the Canadian champions, and I guess the first thing, Karik, thank you for taking the time. I know you've been busier than heck after getting done with the with the briar and then having to go to work right away and, and, and all of that. But I guess the feelings now it's a few days settling in. What does it feel like, Canadian champ? Yeah, I, I think it's still taking a little bit to settle in, but um, yeah, I, yeah. Not sure I can put words to it. <laughs> you know what, I want to ask you about a, a couple of things, but uh, in the 10th end of the final, and um, when Brendan makes the out turn through the hole yeah. and stays, yeah. right then, your thoughts? We won. Yeah, we, we knew at that point we had won. There's so no fear, like, there it's cooey. No, it's cooey, like... No, I, like, I was sure there was nothing. It was good we took the time to take um, another look because I think if we just peel that rock out, there is a potential <laughs> r angle, run double. If you don't stick it. If you don't stick it, but taking that extra time, making sure we stuck it, um, I was sure that we had. And then the up. feeling about, what, 25, 25 seconds later when they put their hands out. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it was. Like finally, we, you always wonder if Kui's going to pull off something, but uh, I was pretty sure at the moment when Brendan stuck that that was it. So let's go into the last, the last three or four years because, you know, obviously it was a huge win way back in getting to, to St. John's, Newfoundland for your yeah. first Briar. Yeah. And you guys weren't ready to win at that point. There's no way. But then all of a sudden, the next year you get to a final, yeah. and then you get to another final. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's a load, it's a boatload of silver, <laughs> which a Martin host has a lot of silver yeah. and before you started getting silver. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, I guess I, I want to get into your mind a little bit. And if it ever thought is gold possible, like there's so many silvers, what was going through your mind? No, I think it's been a process for us and, um, the team played so well, um, in each of those briars and we, learned a lot and we had a lot of fun um, so uh, regardless of the result I think we kept working at it and kept knocking at the door and finally uh, made it happen so that's kind of how it felt for me is that it just it was a matter of time um, it, Brendan's too good to for it not to be so I remember I don't know if you remember you'll probably remember but after uh, we played each other in the in the in the provincials, I don't know if it was the playoffs or, or just before the playoffs, but you guys had us beat, and then just Brendan missed one shot. You guys were young, and I remember you uh, you guys came over for supper at the house, and I was bugging you, of course, like I always would. And uh, and do you remember what you said? No. So I do. So uh, <laughs> Carp would say, "Well, uh, Dad, that's no problem. Uh, it's just a matter of time." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that was the last time you played me because I retired. Yeah. I, I actually took that uh, to heart because well, I'll, yeah, that's, that's probably good advice. Uh, it's just a matter of time, and it was just a matter of time. And here you are, Canadian champion. Um, I want to go back. Let's go back a whole bunch of years here, and uh, I want to hear uh, uh, your thoughts because uh, people would always ask you when you were little uh, if you're going to be a curler. <laughs> yeah, and. My answer usually was no. <laughs> and why was that? Uh, I th think mostly I just loved hockey. That's you not... did? But you had, you had one thing that you said one time about curling that uh, why you were well, going to play it. it was a bit of a different sport back then. <laughs> I, I said it was a wussy sport, <laughs> yeah. but, but it, the game, to be honest, has changed a lot since then. So um, I think bringing in the Olympics and the... Uh, the different work ethic of the players now than it was then. Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time with your team, so <laughs> the team's definitely changed over the years. And uh, I, yeah, I think um, it's grown to, into um, yeah something I really want to be a part of. So. Yeah, of course you're huge into hockey and and, uh, and all that stuff and the, and the double and triple A hockey levels and all that stuff. So let's talk about when you got into curling. 
Um, yeah. That was, uh, well, about grade, I don't know, somewhere in high school or grade something. Grade 11. Yeah. Um, How'd you get Grade in? 11, grade 12. Uh, cute girl asked me to curl and <laughs> it had nothing to do with curling. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's genetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good story and uh, definitely, um, we're, yeah, it's amazing how far we've come since <laughs> we... Because uh, it's mixed went, curling, right? Yeah, mixed, it's just high mixed, school mixed, mixed doubles curling and <laughs> we just wanted to, uh, just wanted to play, um, have a couple of drinks after school or whatever, once we, hey, we were 18 at the time and uh, it was more of a fun social thing and all of a sudden we started winning and... And yeah, it's spiral, spiraled since then. So in the semifinal too, I noticed um, in the last shot, the angle raise, I'll turn angle raise for the win. Uh, Darren was yelling hurry and you'd touch it, but you wouldn't hit it hard. Is that like you and Brad both, is there a plan to that? Is there something to that? Because Darren was yelling really loud, hurry. And you did touch the ice, but it, you did not touch it hard. What's going on with that? Like yeah, what, what's, right, what's, what's well, in the plan there? We, we could hear both. And it was hard, whoa, hard, whoa, like... Oh, so Brendan's, Brendan's say, saying... Oh, and I'm not yeah, hearing that. Yeah, oh, okay, Brendan's okay, okay. saying, whoa, Darren's saying hard, you know you're really close. <laughs> don't, just don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, it was a great shot. That's one of the best shots. That'll be on, like, the highlight reel for years and years to come. Yeah. You know, last shot of the game, a 20-foot angle raise, and you got to stick it. You can't yeah. just make contact, yes. but you actually got to stick it. On the podcast... Um, uh, last week, we uh, we got into talking with Darren and Brennan. They came on the show and uh, talking about it's something I never thought of or heard about, and that's your team's strategic use of the brush heads, uh, being able to save them. Uh, so the idea of actually trying in a game, and and and, and I, I really want to hear from you about this, uh, whose idea it was, because I think it's brilliant, and that's trying to make it so about half out turns and about half in turns in a game and not burning your heads up too soon. How, what, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it definitely started with Brad. He has that kind of mind, just trying to maximize the efficiency of the broom head and um, to the point where we, we've, had to, we've had issues with it as well. So um, it's been a work in progress trying to find a nice medium, but it, it is important to have um, that effectiveness at the end of the game. So um, if we can save it one way or another um, for the end of the game, it, it so the, gives so the actually advantage. Darren like, and and, uh, and Brennan were actually saying that in practice you'll let Pat and Darren sweep a lot of the like keening up the paths for your draws to the button, yeah. so that your heads tend to be a little bit crispier. Yeah, we definitely did that at Miss Briar and, and a couple in the past with, uh, with, know, the, well, uh, with the addition of Pat. Yeah, sure. what kind of a difference do you think it makes? Like, like, yeah, a, yeah. like a, an actual difference, like yeah. in the real life it is Yeah, a well, the, when they're sharp, they're extremely effective. So the first at distance and? Uh, no, well, with direction mostly. Okay. Uh, it's what we're using it for. Right, for yeah. carving to be able to get those directions. And I guess that's why you didn't want to hit that out turn angle raise too hard. If you hit it real hard, you could adjust the line too much and end up screwing the shot up instead of fixing the darn thing. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's really yeah, cool. It's, there's a lot of the too much too. Like you, you can, as a sweeper, kill the line just as much as you can help it. So there's a fine line. Okay. So let's get back into uh, how you started curling in, uh, in high school. And, uh, um, and then you went through... Uh, got through high school with the mixed curling and uh, and then I, I would like to ask you about the importance uh, it was almost a fluke I imagine I'd like to hear from you on that getting on the U of A team like how much had you played before you became a U of A <laughs> Golden Bear athlete which is now probably the biggest school in Canada or in the world for curling and you, you get on that team yeah well looking back it, it was huge um, at the time I know it, we had a good little run in the mixed provincials, and uh, that got me interested. Um, went tried out with uh, Rob Kreps, and I, I think I had I was on the edge of being um, on the team or not. I think I snuck into the last spot more on 
the um, potential than at the time, <laughs> the, the skill at the time. And uh, yeah, it, over the five years I was there, um, got significantly uh, improved and met Brendan and Brad and all kinds of good curlers through the program. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely affected the entire um, my curling career. Well, I know it's a huge deal to, to be able to wear the Canadian flag yeah. coming up at the World Championship, but you actually had an opportunity to do that at the Universiad Games yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Um, so I think that too might have had a big uh, result or, or uh, meaning with, with being able to play at this level. Yeah, for sure. It's, I think it's going to affect even how we go into this week. We've we were in Italy for a full month, and it took it took a toll on our bodies. And <laughs> it, um, yeah, there's just a lot of different feelings and different uh, aspects that come in a big event like the University Ad, um, big worldwide event. And uh, yeah, you approach it differently. Are there any, are there any of the athletes that you played in the University Ad games that are actually going to be in this World Championship? Lots. Yeah. Uh, is there? Oh yeah. Can you For name sure. a few? I, I, I didn't um, know that. I actually, I was asking that one out of the blue. I wasn't actually sure that was uh, what's happening. Oscar Erickson um, and a couple of the Swedes. There, there's definitely a few of um, uh, assets. What uh, your team brings individually to to your the, the greater good of the team in assets. So let's start with your skipper. Yeah, I think we have a very well-rounded team, and uh, it's. It, over the years, it becomes more and more apparent. Like Brendan, um, he's obviously a great shot maker, but um, the organization he brings, the uh, the calming uh, nature of his, he he brings the whole team. Uh, I think we just there's a lot of trust that we've built up over the years, and uh, I'd say those are a couple of the biggest features. Just that. We all believe in him with his shot making, and uh, and over the years, you just you you know he's going to make a ton of shots, and you can stand behind him. And I, I think that's a huge um, characteristic that uh, I don't take for granted with Brendan. Sure. Well, okay. So you got the calming influence of Brendan. So let's go to Darren. <laughs> yeah. That would that would be somewhat opposite. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> it's it's almost the. Uh, Oh, it is the opposite, and um, I think that was a piece that we were missing in the prior teams we had, finding that right fit at third. Um, Darren's all about making sure Brendan's comfortable, but he brings a, a lot of energy, and um, we've had to work out what that looks like to make sure it works with <laughs> our team, but uh, I think he's fit the role perfectly and uh, and he makes a ton of shots as well so I'd like to get into Darren just a little bit before we go on to on to Brad and that's uh, yeah, the best of in my opinion the best event I've ever seen him curl even when he was young um, was this Briar yeah. like, so good and one thing that both your mom and I noticed is um, how he used to get excited and he'd throw one of the Hail Marys down like there's a, a bullet down there I don't I don't know if he threw one of those I, th I think, well, I think he threw a couple, but <laughs> it was, uh, that has to do with Donnie B, too, uh, having uh, that coach on the bench making uh, those same observations over past Briars, and I think Donnie told him at the beginning of the week, you got two or three of those, and that's it, and I think he stuck to two, and uh, okay, and, and just tamed back that peel away a little bit, and just made a ton of shots. So before we get to Brad, let's let's talk about Donnie V, um, because I, I would like to know what he brings, what his job. I think it, that's probably the best thing to ask is what his job is, because obviously a brilliant curler, terrific guy. Yeah. What does he bring to your team? Because since he got involved, you guys have really improved. Yeah, he uh, the strategy side, we we discuss a lot of shots, but um, he he doesn't get, he knows when to pick his moments, and uh, he's great at that. He uh, gives us scouting reports, which we love. It's <laughs> On kind the of team. a team thing. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Um, 
but uh, it's usually right and that's just I think made us be able to focus on certain aspects a little more. Uh, he brings high energy and uh, a lot of fun to the team. He's keeping us laughing out there all the time and keeps the mood light. So, um, yeah, we, we definitely would have done it this week without Donnie. Perfect. And now, of course, your sweeping partner and a great friend of yours, Mr. Thiessen. Yeah, Brad, he, he's just a beast and uh, really smart. Uh, looks at the game a little differently, more analytical. Um, like we were talking about the brushes earlier, the, he tries to find every mathematical inch we can, <laughs> we can get. And uh, especially with sweeping, both of us and Darren work a ton on um, just continuing to have an advantage sweeping. And uh, that mixed with the behemoth of a man he is, <laughs> uh, yeah, is, makes him just a perfect fit. We got talking to, uh, to, to Brendan um, on, on the last show about the two of you guys. A lot of the top teams, we, you know, we called, called you guys monsters. Uh, like, like Space Jam, monsters. But the, uh, uh, most teams will have one yeah. of the great, big, strong monster people who can just carry that rock, but he's got two. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure which one of you two weighs more, but you guys are both big. We fight it out. <laughs> we're usually <laughs> pound for pound. Because you're about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you two? We're exactly the same height. Okay. We've measured since university for 10 years now. We, we're always within a decimal of, <laughs> like, we're same height and usually within, definitely within five pounds. Sometimes I get him, sometimes he gets me. We're built differently, but uh, right. yeah, both 6'3 and 2'15. And I think that could be looked at as being an advantage. Um, so when, when, when I built my team back in, in 06, trying to get to the 2010 Olympics, uh, Ben Hebert, a beast, yeah. right? Tr unbelievable sweeper. Okay, Mark, f a phenomenal athlete, but Mark would weigh a buck 70. Yeah. Um, incredibly strong. But one beast, only, like not two beasts, yeah. and, and, and Brendan's got that. Do you think that there's an advantage to that, being able to carve from both sides, being able to do all these various things from both sides? Or, oh. or do you do that from both sides, I guess yeah. would be a question. Oh yeah, it, um, yeah, there's certain shots that we can play on both sides that you can just trust we can hold it, and uh, you might not see that with all the teams, and it's a huge advantage for sure. Um, we, just making the team, developed that team in university to have a lefty and a righty so that we could both be on our strong sides. It worked out great that we we're both big guys and um, that was all part of building that team back in university. It was actually that he's a lefty and you're a righty. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just huge if, especially if you're, um, if you're a lefty with your right hand down. Yeah, which oh, is, exactly. Which yeah. is a bit odd. Yeah, closed Clo sweeping lefty and righty um, and and to just be big <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. you can't you can't yeah either you are or you aren't exactly yeah. so <laughs> like, I remember we played with Carter Rycroft and he wanted to gain weight because yeah. he was about a buck 50 Carter great guy and uh, and he's in tremendous physical condition always Carter but he wanted to gain weight and I remember he went on to a program eating six meals a day like he <laughs> was eating like crazy and he gained nine pounds yeah. over a very long time. But of course, once he stopped eating, I'm right back down to his normal weight. <laughs> like yeah. You can't force yourself to be bigger than your body's supposed to be. Yeah. I want to ask you a little bit about goal setting. You know, I, I, I listen to so many things about from, from various coaches, um, not just curling, but s sports around the globe. And so many teams are dead set on setting goals. Now, not a lot of goals. If you set too many goals, I, I believe it's kind of a waste of time. But if there's specific pointed goals, be it monthly, quarterly, yearly, quadrennially, um, it seems to make sense to me. What do you guys do? Yeah, well, we started with goals like that. Um, and we always had, um, at first it was making the, uh, making the briar, then making the championship round or the, the playoffs. Then uh, last year we, it was, really a goal to make that one-two game and uh, got that and uh, 
obviously this year we wanted to win. That was obvious. Um, we did talk about it, but it was we all wanted that. So, um, but we've been working with uh, Mark Komar from Flow Performance and um, more to just um, he brings out the discussion of goal setting and what our team um, dynamic looks like it, um, to us. And I think bringing out that discussion, we, we had some great discussions regarding uh, what our team looks like on the ice and what we want to look like. And um, I think all those things, being on the same page together with goals and values and all those type of things brought the uh, brought the team together so um, so by, by on the ice you you mean like if you watch yourself um, on video making sure the team looks professional look or, uh, no, or what, no, what are you talking about no um, we have this uh, a little acronym that we've been using it's uh, GTF um, we we brought it up as a team we uh, it's grit, talent, and freedom. Um, I think in the past we used, we're, we've always been a gritty team. That's mm -hmm. like part of our DNA. And uh, we've battled through lots of hard games and uh, that, that we knew right away. We got more and more talented, skilled to the point where there wasn't a ton we could improve on that. Um, we, so we always can, but we were shooting in the 90s mm -hmm. and um, consistently. So um, this year we looked at what kind of those missing pieces were. And um, yeah, just I think playing free for us each had a different thing. For me, it was mostly in the communication part and um, making sure that I spoke up when when it was a, when we needed it and in situations such as the last shot, maybe not holding back information um, because you want Brendan to worry about making the shot. Or, <laughs> sure. Um, we, I think we did a great job of that. Always, uh, we all brought as much info on the table as we could and made sure nothing, uh, no stone was unturned and mm -hmm. I think it, uh, it made the difference. I think, yeah, I, I think I even noticed that, but not very often. No, no, it, it's only in a couple key moments in right. the game. Because it, you know, when I played, it was always if, if too much information came in, it was kind of the boy that cried wolf. Yeah. And you just don't know, okay, there's more stuff coming in. Yeah. You don't know what to filter and what to listen to. So I agree with you to not, uh, to not bring it too much. Um, just a couple more things. Uh, COVID, yeah. obviously, this year. Um, winning under COVID. Um, does it make it any more special, or is it just you're you're the national, you're the Canadian champion? But there was some weird stuff this year from yeah. from practice to, to to being game ready, um, fitness, all of that. I, I guess I'd like to hear your thoughts on on what it means to win this year. Yeah, I think um, it's a testament to our team. We knew there's going to be challenges. Um, we talked about what that may or may not look like. And um, I think we just have so much fun as a team that when we are out there, regardless of what's happening around us, um, w w we were just happy to be out there and have a ton of fun. And um, we did have situations like in the BC game where we were <laughs> delayed for almost an hour and um, we just had a ton of fun on the backboards and then got back to it. So. Um, yeah, it's. I think that's part of what makes our team great. Yeah, that B, uh, that that uh, BC. Oh my goodness, what a thing that was. Where uh, probably one of the nicest people in curling <laughs> gets yeah. mad, and takes a chunk out of and the ice. A, well, and a previous teammate. So we well, played together in a slam together. And <laughs> yeah, it, nothing against Steve. It was. It happens, but um, I think the way we responded um, and made sure we got that W. It definitely. Uh, just shows to the team we've become. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I remember I used to have a, a white broom and it had a uh, 
kind of a rounded back on it and it was yeah. really soft. So I could smack the ice, it wouldn't have mattered. But I forgot the broom at home. And so I had to grab one at the club and it had a really sharp edge. And it was on Tim Yo's ice out in Givens. And I got mad, smacked the ice. I got with him all the time, because, but I had a broom that wouldn't wreck the ice. Well, a big chunk come out of that ice. <laughs> And I was an ice maker, and, and Tim's a friend of mine, right? Yeah. Oh, no, I was so embarrassed. So then we, we finished up the game. And luckily, it wasn't in a, in a path where the rock would go. And after the game, uh, Tim made me go out and fix it. <laughs> so I was there till like midnight yeah. <laughs> getting the ice done. But oh, I'll never forget. Steve will never. No, he will, he will never, not forget he, that. He won't forget it, and he'll never do it again. I've been yeah. so careful to not do that again. And I was about, I was in Nate. So I was probably 19 years old when I did that. I'm 54 now, not a chance would I do that again. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts uh, just when you walk into that building. Um, I know it's in the bubble, it's the same building, but it's a different situation. You'll be the Canadian team. When you walk on the ice, I think you play Scotland first, first yeah. game. What's it going to feel like? Oh, we know we're going to have to be ready for a game. We know those Scottish boys as well, and uh, yeah, they're a great sweeping team. We're I think we're ready to go toe to toe, but uh, yeah, it'll get us right into the <laughs> right, right off the bat. So can't wait. Right into the heat. Yeah. Right and the last heat. question. And last question. Um, because of this big win, um, do you think it affects your mindset, your team's mindset, uh, going into next December and obviously the big Olympic trials? Yeah, that was that's something we talked about um, at the beginning of the quad. Um, we did think winning the Briar was going to be a important step um, to that trials um, being in those big games and finally winning one it just your confidence level goes up and um, and just knowing how you reacted in certain situations and um, yeah I think it's a huge step for our team and we're definitely looking forward to the trials I am too and I'm also looking forward to Calgary because uh, I'm going to be up in the booth at the, with the World Curling Federation cheering you guys. Not cheering you guys on. I will be unbiased. I will be unbiased up in the booth, but it will be, uh, we'll be watching you. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be unbiased. <laughs> Join my dad, Warren Hansen, and Jungle Jim Jerome on Inside Curling.